19th century typography exhibits a lot of the same characteristics of the commercial products that I've just shown you. And in fact, the thing that is the most recognizable about 19th century typography is really attached to the issue of being able to communicate to people in a new commercial context. This is a theater poster of the period where the things that are important, like the location of the theater, the name of the productions, handsome husband, he would be an actor, Olympic devils, get your attention because of this ultra bold typography. During this period, still, this is before you could put large scale illustrations onto posters. So in a way, the only way to kind of grab attention in the kind of new, busy city environments was to exaggerate the type. And so you have typographers in Western Europe, in the United States, working on the expansion or exaggeration of book typefaces into typefaces that would work on public posters. These posters, for instance, this is for an a lecture, it's a broadside announcing an astronomy lecture. And again, you see this lovely use of really large fonts to punctuate the poster. Your attention is really drawn by these fonts. So you have the beginnings of the exaggeration of letter forms, often exaggerating the thicks and the thins. For instance, this piece or the other thing is, typical to this Victorian period, even the idea of taking the surface of the font and ornamenting it. So this German poster from the 1880s shows letter forms that literally have floral and architectural ornaments drawn on top of the font. It's also the period where some of the earliest commercial typography actually needs to stuff a lot of information onto the surface of poster. And the very first experiments with sans serif fonts date all the way back to the early 19th century and were specifically designed to be able to efficiently cram a lot of information into the interstitial parts of posters in order to allow for those big exaggerated words created by font design to happen as well. You have all kinds of formal experiments, like turning letter forms into 3D, like this font from the 1830s, or exaggerating peculiar elements. Again, many times the formal exaggerations will be given a kind of identity, like this font, which was called Tuscan, although it's really hard to identify why it might have been referred to in that manner so that it kind of falls in line again with this interest in the sort of stylization and the exaggerated use of ornament as a way to contribute to visual clutter and be part of it as well. This is an American font, 1849, and this one, another American font. You probably look at these and think circus lettering, and the truth is these kinds of fonts, again, were used for public announcements and for all kinds of, you know, entertainments or announcing new publications or all kinds of commercial and cultural uses. And the fonts themselves were really popular, they were really valued, and they did this job to, you know, attract the attention of, of an audience on the street in a really powerful way. Here is an interesting example of just how the typography had to do the work to get the attention of an audience where the illustration couldn't. Like this is actually a poster announcing the availability in Ashland, Ohio of the McCormick's Reaper. You know, this was a really important new piece of equipment that farmers were interested in. But you can see there's this pale little woodcut of the reaper, and by the way, there was probably only one woodcut made of this reaper, and you can find announcements and posters from other places as well that, that use the same woodcut because it was really expensive to have an illustrator make a woodcut or an engraving at that time. So you have this little illustration 
in the middle. It's really the type gets your attention and it has to do kind of a heavy lifting. This is a really interesting circus poster from the 1860s announcing all the different features in that circus where each line has got a different kind of 3D lettering or shadowed lettering. This poster is unusual in that it actually uses two colors, so they spent some money to make it. But again, you can see that the promise of the excitement of the event is completely conveyed by this sort of incredibly lively typography. But even to this day, this kind of design, where it's just plain, striking, heavy lettering on a colored background is actually a throwback all the way to the 19th century where the public announcements were conveyed typographically.